A lot of you have been asking me, how did I come to this particular message? I never noticed. It was birthed actually and then conveniently put away in the history of my life processes. It was birthed when I was in college. Let me tell you an interesting story, and this has to do with something that I actually had an experience with while in college. The year was 1971. I was on the yearbook staff at the college I attended. Private college, very small as compared to other types of colleges. And I was on the yearbook staff, and I was the student life editor. Big deal. But it was a great opportunity for me because I wasn't really a photograph specialist. I wasn't good with a camera. And back in this day, you have to remember, cameras were not digital. They were regular film-based, mostly 35 millimeter, and they would have zoom lens on them. And you would have a person who was kind of like a camera aficionado. Since our yearbook, we wanted it to be a good piece, but we couldn't really afford all color photos. It would be a black and white series of pictures with color utilized in various sections to highlight or spotlight a specific thing. And of course, the cover of the yearbook was a big deal as well. Okay, now, getting back to the point. I was given the job to take the photographs that had been taken during the school year on a randomized basis where the photographer simply said, I'll take a picture of this and this and this. Student life is pretty much the same. Colleges may be different, they may be private, they may be state run, they may be large and major in size, they may be small, they may be public colleges, they may be Christian colleges. It's, it's true that there are differences, but the one thing that seems to be fairly common is what's it like each and every day about the business of just being a student on campus because you're not always in class. Sometimes you're in the lunchroom having dinner. Sometimes you're in the dormitory having fellowship with your friends. Sometimes you're in the library doing research. Sometimes you're sitting in the quad, which is that center area of the campus where there are trees and shade and benches and you're having fellowship. Sometimes you're out at night dating or going to a movie or out having dinner. And there are other things too. There's the laboratory situations. There's the walking to and from one building to another to get to one class or another class. And then there's just the conversations that take place within the class, the interaction with professors, the interaction with administrative leaders at the school. It's a full-on process. And so these pictures that have been taken by this very gifted artist, his name was Raymond, and I call him an artist because I think photography is an art in and of itself. And I always call Raymond an artist. By the way, today he's a retired missionary. <laughs> and I still communicate with him by Facebook. I looked at Raymond's pictures. And I said, your job was to provide me with a good collection of pictures that I could create an entire section called on student life and be able to convey a story of what it's like on campus for the entire picture, the well-rounded life of a student. And it was fun, and I was enjoying lining up, setting them, putting it here on this page, on this page, this page. Occasionally, I'd put a little short blur or phrase at the top to point something out. I really didn't describe the pictures. I let the pictures speak for themselves. And this is when it hit me. What are you going to name your student life section? Because every section, although it's student life, you want to give it a name that sort of makes the person say, oh, that's an interesting concept. As I looked at the pictures, here's what I noticed. There's something that they've focused in. Are you with me so far? I've been talking to you about how when you use your senses, and we are sensory creatures, when we're engaged in focusing on someone, our senses are all working. Our eyes are looking at it. Our ears are listening. Our sense of smell may be involved. Our sense of touch could be involved. We're just literally using our senses because, as I've said, we are sensory creatures. But when you look at a photograph, which is an instantaneous nanosecond of a moment in the life of people, and you're looking at the general focus of the picture, have you ever stepped back and analyzed the periphery? 
what's going on in the background. Is there something in the foreground? And that day that I went through those pictures, and most of them were people that I knew on a first name basis. People that I spent every day of my time in school with. Many of them were friends. Some of the girls were gals I dated. I noticed things. For the first time, I saw something else besides just the faces. I looked at the expressions on the faces. Sometimes I'd look in the background of the building. Maybe there was a window open and an image appeared in the building. The sky. In some pictures taken out on the hill because our campus was up on a hill, you could see the skyline of the city in the distance in the background. This was Nashville, Tennessee. It's a good-sized city, and it had a prominent skyline. And in the foreground, shrubbery, trees, perhaps maybe a slight catch of someone's head. What are they doing? A book, a plate of food in the cafeteria, a gathering at a dormitory anteroom for a general conversation, social interaction sitting in the stands at a basketball game, cheering, yelling, holding a sign. Expressions on faces, some of them joyful, some of them focused, studying, looking, examining, some of them detached, not interested. And I asked myself the question, I wonder what's going on in their mind? And then it hit me. These are the things that we see every day Let me say that again. These are the things that you and I see every moment of our life. And the truth is, we simply don't notice. I look at the pictures of my life as I have gone through this journey. Dealing with my mother and Alzheimer's and it hit me. There is a word that I think or an expression that I think that is way overused and even abused. It's called multitasking. What is multitasking? I took it upon myself to do a little study. And multitasking, supposedly, based upon professional criteria, is the ability to do multiple things well at the same time. However, in my research, I've discovered that Multitasking is not what it's cracked up to be. Is driving while trying to text multitasking? Well, some would say it is. The problem is, is it has potentially fatal consequences. Truth of the matter is, if you're trying to focus on a text, you have to take your eyes off of the text in order to look at the traffic, steer the car, and do the things that you're supposed to do. You see the scenario. It's a recipe for a possible fatality. Okay, I'll give you an example. Individuals that know how to take stenography, people that can take dictation and sit here and keyboard while they're listening to something. But you see, you have to understand they have had training so that they have this sense in their fingers of the keyboard. It's not something that they learned overnight. It's something that they worked and practiced and they honed into a skill. And so now it's a part of what they do. I see the same thing when I watch people who sing. A musician that can sing with all of his heart, soul, and mind, and yet play a keyboard or play a guitar. This is the sort of thing that I call multitasking because they're able to do these things, but they're married into the same thing. They're married into the same objective. So the focus is still singular. But in multitasking, generally speaking, our goal must be to understand that when we are out there in life and we're focused on driving or focused on work or focused on reading or focused on watching television or focused on listening to a person who is in front of us, any kind of a situation, we have to become aware of the fact that our senses are going to detect things. Whether it's an odor, whether it's an unusual sound, many, many things. 
And all I'm saying is that you can't become a multifaceted individual and notice everything around you. But know this, your brain is getting it. And that's the reason why when mother situation occurred and I began to step back and analyze all the events of life that led up to this, here's what I discovered. There were things that were always there. They were clues and I didn't notice them until I had the opportunity to go back and pull those pictures up from my psyche and realize I never